Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thank you. For sure. Um, we're going to get back on this little 15 Evan Rude. Turning it into a short shaft. And... Um, We've already got it running, and uh, it's going to need some cosmetic work for sure, um, but we had to go under the flywheel and get it all unstucked under there because it was all greasy and salty and caked up with old crusty grease. and but. She now turns very easy. So we got that done in the last video. In this video, we're going to dive into the lower unit and some ship rods and some cutting some water tubes and all that. But first, there is a but first. <sighs> um, so I got rid of about two of the lawnmowers. And I got rid of that big mopped hammer frailing mower thing thingy so it's out of here and uh, but first we're gonna have to uh, before I dive back into the little Evan Rude this guy won't be up here until the first week of September so I got a little time on that and I had a customer come in and say well you gotta get this boat going cause we gotta go get some halibuts salmons Salmon butts. Anyway, so what do we got? What do we got? There it is. Let's go look. Are you crazy about them Mercuries? Are you crazy about them Mercuries? Nice little skiff, though. Kind of beamy, welded aluminum. Trailer's pretty, um, let's just say basic, but nice little skiff, and I bet that 50 or 40 Merc pushes that along right nice. So, we're going to get the bonnet off of that, get out some, they say, he believes it doesn't have spark, so we'll get the hood off, get some tools together, little meter action and stuff, and see what we find. I'll be right back.
Hmm. All right, the problem with this here guy was that uh, it has two kill switches on it. The push button kill switch was completely corroded together with corrosion, so it was grounding out there. So I cleaned that. Then I went down to the up flick off and on switch, and it had con continuity regardless of the position. So it was bad. So I replaced it. Still had no spark. So then I came around here, took this off, and I found that the ground wire to the switch box had corroded in two. So I had two grounds grounding that shouldn't have been grounding, and the ground for the switch box that should have grounded the switch box was broke off, so it wasn't grounded. So replace the kill switch, clean the one up, put a new connector on the switch box ground, hooked it back up, got spark. But now it was peeing, and then it kind of quit. And I'm, I'm thinking it's just the ears. These muffs ain't worth a darn. Let's see if I can find another pair, a better pair. So, let me get that. And I'll be back. Whoa! Well... Well, let me go get a new Impella. Okay, so I've got, this is the shift rod for a shorty. This is the shift rod for a long shaft. So what I'm gonna do is put the two in my vise, then I'm gonna bend, I'm gonna make that bend that this has right here and that has so I'm going to cut this one off with Diablo. Then I'll bend it and everything. I'll line these two ends up. Clamp it in my vise. Make that bend and then we'll cut that notch or grind that notch down. Let me get set up.
Now I got my bend in there. I'm just going to let things cool down before I go get the Diablo. Now whack it. So let that, I'm going to let that cool for a minute or so. I'll be back. Okay, you can see I've got a set of eye scripts on there. So that uh, everything's kept good and in alignment there. And also, hopefully you can see about that angle. Right there, the screw-in ends are in perfect alignment angle. So now, we will cut it. With the Diablo. Mm -hmm. And if I come in right in here, I'll be right on top of the small one. The short one. line everything up oops right there the bottoms are perfect and right there the tops are about perfect I don't know if you're going to be able to see that or not, but the front side's all you really need to worry about, the bend side here, because that's where the bolt's going to go through. And I can check that pretty much by slipping the one I spread out a little bit and get my bolt. Okay, we got the cut down shift link in there. I got my little pin for the impeller. Oh, I went and got me a, another impeller and I'm gonna slide that on there. And line it up with my little pin. Like a okay. Got me uh, my plate. All I did was clean up that plate there. I put a little Vaseline in where the uh, little tin cup goes in behind that so it stays there. And then I like to take a little soap, spray on the impeller. Turn clockwise to see. And then we put the bolts back. 
This has got the different size ones. It's got shorts in the back, longs in the front. Sorry about that seaplane. It's a little bit noisy. Now I'll do the final snug em ups by hand so I can feel it. It's a feel thing. Little crisscross, little feel. Oh, that one's loose, see? Now why you gotta do it? There we go. And remember, it's plastic and aluminum. Don't go being an ape on it. Well. After all the rain stopped, I came out here. Can you see? See my stick? See my stick? See that? There's a plum. There's another plum. You see that plum right there? Then I got to looking at this old plum tree. There's quite a few of them in there. I'm way back in there, I can see. Yeah. Started looking up high there. There's some more if you look. See them plums right there? There's plums on that tree. They just hide. But, as much as you see them plums, I don't know if they're going to make it. It's uh, not too far coming to September. But once I started looking around, there's some way up. Whoa, sorry about that. There's some way up high. But I don't know if they'll ever ripen up. But there's definitely some plums on that tree. Okay, so there's the water tube and I've got this little device here and it slides and you can see it goes to five inches and then it's got a little bit more there another inch about six inches long overall and there's the five inch mark and it just happens to stop right there at the five so you measure from here then you take your paint pen and where this ends up in there you're gonna make a mark with your little paint pencil I'll make my mark there then you can take a Dremel or a Diablo um, and cut it off right there so that about half to three quarters of an inch of this tube remains up in here and then the lower unit will catch that all right, got me a smaller wheel on here. Let me see my mark. I can get it in there now. Diablo. All right. Now that we cut that off. I want to get a file and just kind of file that so it goes in there in the water tube, you know. I mean, in the uh, little rubber there. And you don't want no copper where you cut it going up in there, so I got this little reamer. And we'll flick them out of there and then ream it a little bit. There we go. That looks pretty good up in there. I'll show you here. I 
that should do it. That should do it. Okay, okay. 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 Let's look up in there. Let's look up in there. How are we gonna look up in there? You're way too high. Look at that. Look. Right. There. And you see the water too. It's right there. See it moving? I wiggle it my finger. I could file that a little more, but I think that'll go in just fine. We'll find out, won't we? So, let's go get the lower unit. Is that thing zoomed in? Let's go get a lower unit then. See if we can get in there. See that water tube at all. There we go. be able to get a, a belt in there. Well, I've got it all the way forward. I've got it all the way up. And I just started my screw with a pair of needle nose. And I hope I got it. It's going in nice. Feels good anyway. Alright, now. lined up. Shake it a little bit, you know, and get that bolt started. Don't move, don't move, don't breathe. Don't move, don't breathe. Okay, now that should be neutral, and it's not. What's that? Neutral. Ah, I'm going to let it down. Tighten it up and see what happens. I get a nut or a bolt or two snug, then I can spin it over and see how the gear shift lines up. You know. Good. 
Well, well now, now we should be able to cycle that power head. And there's neutral. There's reverse. There's neutral. And there's fog. So. Now, I'll get the rest of the bolts in there and we'll stick her in the old tank, see if she's going to pee some water. Be right back. Alrighty, let's see what we get. Let's see if we get some, uh, some play. Let me turn on my sucker. She's a runner and a shifter and a peer. Boy, it needs some cosmetic work though. Um, salty little motor, but now it's it uh, got a new water pump impeller and so forth. It'd be good to go. Hey, look what the fine folks over at Super Clean sent me. I got a couple of them. I had some other ideas for those, but my calendar was out of date, so I just put it there. Alrighty, so let me get you adjusted. I got to adjust you. Something like that anyway. That's close enough. Um Okay, so we did some hacking and some whacking and some so yes you can take the uh, water tube in there and cut that much off and I can show you I can show you I show you if you want to know how much I cut off I show you Ooh, not with that old rusty tape I won't. Let me get a decent tape now. I'm gonna throw that one away. It's hideous. Let's see if I got a good one. This one better? Oh yeah. Alright, so what we did was we cut off that much. Hopefully you can see it. I can't see it because I got it facing you, but I'm touching that little deal there. Boy, that's harder than it looks. That's harder than it looks. That's hard. When you got big old fat fingers. Okay, there you go. That hopefully will show up good. That's how much I cut off. Right there. The ship ride. How much did you cut off? How much? 
we cut off same thing I'm gonna touch it right there now remember you got the bin you gotta have a bin but roughly nope that ain't how much that that much that much that's how much I cut off can I do this any worse there that's level hopefully you can see that that's how much of the shift rod I cut off and then you don't have to make that 360 degree groove you only need to make it where the bolt that holds the shift rod remember it goes forward like that so you only need to make it on this back side right there with Diablo or uh, a little rat tail file or a Dremel tool you know that kind of thing but that's how much of the shift rod you got to cut off then you got now this part you're just gonna have to come up with you're gonna have to buy the short drive shaft can you cut these yes you can if you know somebody who has the ability to weld and straighten which there are many you can cut these 22 and 9 30 seconds or something like that I believe that's how long and uh, they will have a leveling jig and they will bow tail the two ends they will convex those and then fill it in with weld they have it clamped into a v-jig type of a deal when they make the initial weld and then they'll take it over to a lay and turn it lathe and turn it it is doable but it's normally easier to find find a use you heat that shift rod you take you something like a piece of pipe once you get it good and cherry red in there and I showed you how to clamp it in your vise and all and line up the threaded ends line up the top get some vise grips heat it till it's turn start to turn red right there and then do your bend if you go too much bend it back like that hey you remember that little bee Three Horse Johnson Belgium made. Just so you guys know. You know what? I'm going to take off my glove. There's no reason for me to have it on. Can't do hardly nothing with them. You ever try to pick your nose one? Um, remember that? Belgium. 1990. Three horsepower. Remember how bad that Cabo Repo was? Look at how pretty. It cleaned up pretty good. Now it's all labeled. Then what I like to do, because this is going to go out in my Conix parts thing where I keep my carbs and everything that's unheated. So I take me a little tri flow and squirt it all around the rain. Put it in there. Now I can put it away. It's all labeled. And if I need one, or if I decide to try and do something with that power head, I got my carburetor. So, now, you will end up with extra parts once you do this. Stuff like this. Now, watch the salt that comes out of here. Watch, and it's just going to be a tap. Ew. Nasty. So, I got a lot of people go. That ain't how I would have took did that apart. You don't live where I live. You understand? I deal with some of the saltiest outboard ever on this earthiness. Yes, I do. But uh, it's getting a little bit late. You understand? And we've got this little guy here where it will run, it will shift. You can actually use the throttle now. New impeller in it, it pees really well. Shifts good, and it is now a short shaft. I will do some cosmetic stuff to this motor because I am selling, well, I've already sold this motor to a fella coming up from Idaho. Don't you know? 
So we're going to get it cleaned up a little bit and make it look a little nicer. It's got that old anti-filing paint on it. You know, looks like, but probably does a good job. But I'm going to clean it all up and uh, wash it all up, clean it and get a, a little bit more of this salt out of there. But uh, seems to be a good runner and something I think he'll be able to go on his hunt or whatever he's doing. He said he was going to be doing it on the south end of the island. So, hopefully... Uh, He'll get up here and get his little motor and it'll work out well for him. And that, as always, is one more hack from Kodiak. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.